You are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rory McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. In the war-ravaged Tigray region of Ethiopia, hundreds have died in the ongoing conflict between government forces and the Tigray People's Liberation Front, or TPLF, an armed outfit seeking the independence of the region. As per reports of the Catholic charity Aid to the Church in Need, people in the region are traumatised while there is rampant hunger and an acute shortage of medicines. There are also reports of attacks on priests and nuns, as well as churches being looted and vandalised. According to Amnesty International, Eritrean troops supporting the federal government of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed have massacred innocent civilians in Tigray. Fighting broke out in November last year between federal troops supported by Eritrean forces and the TPLF. Now here is some good news from the US. The governors of the states of Montana and Oklahoma have signed bills protecting the unborn. Governor of Montana Greg Gianforte signed three pro-life bills. The first one is named House Bill No. 140, which mandates that a pregnant woman seeking an abortion should be shown ultrasound images of the child and made to listen to the heartbeat, while Bill No. 136 prevents the abortion of an unborn child capable of feeling pain. Bill No. 171 protects women from harmful chemical abortions. In Oklahoma, Governor Kevin Stitt announced on Tuesday that he has signed another piece of abortion-related legislation. Senate Bill 918 repeals abortion regulations and the state would outlaw legal abortions if the Attorney General certifies that the Supreme Court has overruled Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey. The Diocese of Albany and Ogdensburg, along with Catholic and Christian charities, have requested the US Supreme Court to hear their case against the abortion coverage mandate of New York. According to the mandate issued by the state's Department of Financial Services in 2017, employers have to cover abortions in health insurance plans meant for staff. Although the state has granted a religious exemption, the plaintiffs claim that it is too narrow and it fails to exempt agencies serving or employing people of different religions. Bishop Edward Scharfenberger of Albany has expressed confidence about the Supreme Court preserving the right to practice one's faith. If the court declines to hear the case, the plaintiffs will have to fund abortions in health plans. In Australia, former parliamentarians and current lawmakers have come together in support of the 17th attempt to legalise euthanasia in the state of South Australia. The Voluntary Assisted Dying 2020 Bill, which was authored by Labour parliamentarians Kaya Maher and Susan Close, will be put to a vote next Wednesday in the Upper House. If the bill is passed, it will be the first to be supported by a full Chamber of Parliament, in the event of receiving the support of lower house lawmakers, South Australia will become the fourth state in the country to have euthanasia laws. The bill allows access to euthanasia for those who have been residing in the state for at least a year, those who are aged 18 and above, and for those with an incurable illness that is at an advanced stage and is expected to cause death soon with much suffering. Upholding the sanctity of life, the Ecuadorian Episcopal Conference has reminded the Constitutional Court that the crime of rape cannot be solved with abortion. In a letter addressed to the head of the court, Hernán Salgado, the bishops expressed concern over the attempt to decriminalise abortion for victims of rape. While remaining emphatic in their defence of the right to life, the bishop said that in cases of rape, the culprit must be treated with the maximum rigour of the law. They urged the magistrates to be ethical and humane in their decisions, adding that the fundamental duty of the court is to interpret the constitution and to administer justice. The Holy See has announced that Pope Francis is praying for the recovery of the bishop-elect of South Sudan's Rumbek Diocese, who was shot at on Sunday night. The Holy Father was immediately informed about the attack against Father Christian Carlasari, and he is praying for the injured Kaboni missionary, who has been serving in the country since 2005. Meanwhile, Father Carlasari, who is recovering in Nairobi in Kenya, has forgiven his attackers. He said in a statement that he knows Rumbek deserves a lot better. His consecration was scheduled for May the 23rd, that is Pentecost Sunday. In the Diocese of Sacramento in the US state of California, two parishes became the targets of vandalism in the span of two weeks. The statues of the Blessed Virgin, St. John the Evangelist and St. Mary Magdalene outside the Holy Rosary Church in Woodland were defaced with black paint. The incident took place during the weekend of April the 17th and the 18th, 
According to a parish member, the vicar father Jonathan Molina has come up with a project to clean the statues. There was a similar act of desecration at the parish of St John Vianney in Rancho Cordova, where the statue of the Holy Virgin was sprayed with paint. There is growing concern over rising acts of vandalism targeting churches and sacred statues in the country. As India struggles with the highest number of COVID-19 infections globally, the Catholic leaders of the country have urged the government to deploy the military to fight the spread of the pandemic. On April the 27th, India recorded more than 300,000 new cases, with over 3,000 deaths. As thousands continue to die from severe oxygen shortages and a lack of medical facilities, Bishop Theodore Mascarenhas, former Secretary General of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of India, has called on the federal government to deploy the military to control the second wave of the pandemic. The bishop said the federal government should consider deploying military personnel to assist the civil administration to effectively deal with this alarming situation of people living in fear. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.